And so tonight on this webinar, my name is Becky Sarantu, Program and Partnership Team Leader in the North Region. And with me today is Layla Ehlers, Program and Partnership Manager in the Central Region. So we're going to start out with some polls tonight. We just want to find out who's here. So our first poll is going to pop up here. We just want to know what grade level you're in, what you're in right now. So you should be seeing the poll. And you can just go ahead and click on your answer. Are you with the Daisies, Brownies, Juniors, Cadets, or Seniors and Ambassadors? And we'll just give it just a few seconds here. All right. And let's see what we've got here. We have mostly Daisies, 60% Daisies, some Brownies, a few more extra Juniors, and some Cadet Leaders. Wonderful. All right, I have one more question for you tonight. So are any of you on this line line today, are you bridging? So uh, are you moving to the next level? So yes or no, are you bridging this year? Okay, let's see what we've got. And 30% of you are bridging, but 70% of you are not bridging. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that information. Okay, so we'll get moving on into our agenda. And so tonight we're, is, we're it's an exciting time for you. We're here to talk about um, start wrapping up that troop year and start planning for your next year. Our agenda tonight will be going over troop financial reporting, year-end celebrations, early bird registration, planning for next year, and answering questions that you may have. And we are going to jump right in to troop financial planning and financial reports. So one of the reasons that you needed to keep really great records this year is for the annual reporting that is required. The troop financial report, report is required by GSUSA and the IRS to make sure proper reporting of funds are kept on file. It also ensures accountability, making sure our leaders are being good stewards of girls' money, and allows open communication with parents. Every troop is required to submit a troop finance report by July 31st, along with a copy of your bank statement. This is the same report you provided information on when you opened your check the checking account this year. So what you need to do is go to our council website, which is popping up there, gswo.org slash financial report. And the information you're going to need on this form is basic troop and bank account information. You'll need to report out your income. So membership registration dues, troop dues you've collected, have extra program fees you collected, your cookie and fall product money, if you did extra money earning projects, or maybe you had some other income, you would report all of that. And then you're going to report your expenses. What supplies did you purchase? Program fees? Did you spend money on service projects? You bought patches and badges or spent your money on other ways? You're going to report all of that out. And before you submit your troop financial report, make sure you make a copy for yourself. And then you hit submit. And it's that simple. And if there's an error with the form, the system will not accept your submission. And it will let you know where this error is occurring. And it's going to give you that opportunity to go back and correct it. So if you don't get an error message when you're reporting on your financial report, you can accept that your financial report was submitted correctly. And your true financial report is for the troop year. It's not calendar year. It's your troop year that you are reporting out on your income and your expenses. All right, so let's get to some fun stuff. You've made it through this year, and it's time to celebrate. So let's talk about some year-end celebrations. Why do we celebrate? It's an important part of the year, and it's just a great time to share what the girls have learned. Did they learn a new skill from the chef badge, or maybe they've learned to be a great saleswoman through cookies? It's a time to celebrate new experiences, like going camping or you, if you went on a trip. It's a time to reflect on thoughts and feelings about the service projects that you did this year, or maybe you've earned your highest award. And it's time to celebrate friendship skills and all the good friends that, that the girls have made this year. And secondly, it's great to have ceremonies at the end of the year because they're so impactful and they're really memorable. And girls will just remember how proud they felt. They'll feel empowered for that next challenge. 
And I'm sure those of you who are out there who are Girl Scouts will remember ceremonies that you were in. It's something we always hear about, their fondest memories when we are talking to our alumni. And then also year-end ceremonies, it's a great time to build that connection between families and Girl Scouts. It's the time for parents to see what their daughters accomplished this year and an important way for you to communicate how parents can become more involved and help out the troop next year. Ceremonies are a perfect time for parents to see how much fun you had with the troop, all the memories, all the quality time that you were able to spend together, a great way to encourage more parents to join with you. And then finally, year-end ceremonies are just fun. It's supposed to be fun. So the girls are excited about what they they did this year with you and with the troop, and it gets them pumped up and gets them all excited for next year. And so for your year in ceremonies, here's a few helpful, useful tips to make them fun and memorable. First, there's awards. It's a time to provide all of those badges and patches that you have earned this year, and you may have been doing it as you went along, but if you got behind, make sure you give them to the girls now so that they have them for the end of the year. And you could um, make additional certificates, like one idea would be to use the Girl Scout law, and you could give out an award for being helpful, for showing courage, for being fair, and so some fun awards like that. And you can add props. There's always candles, flowers, flag ceremonies, and these kind of props make the event more formal and more special. And you can borrow candle holders and flags and flag holders from your council office. An idea would be to go outside. Most of our uh, ceremonies are going to be in the late spring, so it's a great way to go outside and include some nature. You could also have it on our council property. They have, we have wonderful properties, which would make a great place for a ceremony. Or maybe you just want to spend the night out at camp the night before ceremony, and just make sure you have a backup plan for those bad weather occasions. And another tip is to include others. So many of your service units combine a camp weekend or an end-of-the-year event picnic with recognition events. Be sure to include your families and celebrate your families too and thank them for helping out in all their contributions to the troop. And the last tip is to personalize it. Just have fun. This is the time for the girls to add in those songs they learned this year that they won't stop singing and they love it. They could add in poems or stories or activities or skits, anything that they love and wanted to add into it. You can check out Pinterest under Girl Scout Ceremony Pins for creative ideas. There's lots of wonderful creative troop leaders out there who use Pinterest, so you can find some really good ceremony ideas out there for that. But the whole focus is just to make sure this ceremony is to mark it and honor our girls' progression and the growth that they've done through Girl Scouts. So there are a few of you out there that are bridging, so we'll do this bridging information. Um, this bridging mar marks your transition from one level to the next. So it's going from daisies to brownies, brownies to juniors, and so on. And br the bridging ceremonies are milestones in Girl Scouts. And there are specific requirements for each age level, but like ceremonies themselves, they can be as traditional or as fun as you and the girls would like them to be. Each time the girls bridge to a new level, they are eligible to earn a bridging award, which you can see there on the slide. Those are the different levels in the awards, and it has two requirements for the badge. It's Pass It On, where the girls will pass on something they learned to the younger Girl Scouts. And it's Look Ahead, where girls will look forward to moving on to the next level. So if you are bridging this year, or maybe you would like to celebrate girls who are bridging, you can see the bridge picture in the middle of the slide. On Saturday, July 22nd, our girls will literally cross this bridge. It's a bridge from... Kentucky to Cincinnati called the Purple People Bridge, which is so fun. So the girls are going to be able to cross that bridge to symbolize bridging to the next Girl Scout level. And then afterwards, there's a ceremony and a celebration for all your families. So anyone's welcome to come, and you can register on our website at gswo.org. And then also check out for local events. Your service unit has a lot of cool bridging events. So you can find other ceremony and bridging ideas and requirements at come to our council. We have resource rooms for that. You can go to our website. We have a wonderful blog at gswo.org, and then our blog. Go to our national website, which is girlscouts.org, or Google and Pinterest. 
And of course, check out your service units. There's wonderful women who have so much knowledge and experience. And also at the end, we're going to give you some detailed bridging information on webinars for next week. If you're bridging, we have some really good webinars next week. All right. This is Layla speaking to you about early bird. So thank you, Becky, for all of that. So she talked to us about kind of ending the year right with the ceremony. So I think we're probably a little excited about it. So our new early bird ambassadors, Gabby, Izzy, Rosie, and Lucy, are going to bring us everything we need to know about early bird registration this year, starting with what is early bird? Some of you may know, but if we don't, Early Bird is the registration kickoff for the 2017-2018 membership year for all members, that's girls and adults. Um, and this runs April 17th through June 15th. The cost is $25 per member, whether girl or adult. And there's tons of benefits to Early Bird registration for both you and your troop, of course. So we'll start with troop incentives. You have the Get 25 for 5, where your troop will get $5 off the adult registration for up to five adult volunteers. And then there's patches, like the one shown. This is this year's Early Bird patch. So girls who are registered during Early Bird will receive the brand new patch. And if they add a friend, they'll also get the Add a Girl patch. And of course, there's the cookie incentive. Troops who register at least five girls and two approved adults uh, by June 15th and participate in the fall product sale will receive an additional five cents per box of cookies sold in 2018. I don't know about you, but I always like to make more money. And you also get first access. So participating early bird troops will be invited for a sneak peek at the upcoming fall program events. And on July 1st, Leaders who have registered troops in the volunteer toolkit will have access to the new calendar year. And then troop leader benefits. There's something in it for you, I promise. It helps you be prepared. So by renewing your girls' membership now, your troop would be ready for the next year. And then do it for the girls. Help your girls return in the fall, including those who might have gotten lost over the summer months. And this lets you relax as well. You don't have to spend the summer or the first few weeks of the school year chasing down registrations. That's a really stressful time as is, so there's no need to do that. And new this year, there's a brand new incentive. It's something big to chirp about, you could say. It's as easy as one, two, three, meaning if you renew your troop during the first three days of the campaign, that's April 17th through 19th, your troop will be entered into a drawing for a reimbursement of up to $250. So that's up to 10 girl membership registrations will be included to the lucky troop that renews by April 19th for another year of positive energy, excitement, and experiences that will help her build the skills she needs today and tomorrow. And we want to keep in mind that she is the future, and you can help her build it by renewing your troop during early bird registration kickoff. So now that we're all about early bird, let's talk about how to do it. Registration is very easy. The instructions are shown here on the screen. All you need to do is log into MyGS, click the Troop tab, and then select all the members, that's girls and adults, that will be registering, and scroll to select Continue, and then you can complete the transaction from there. I do want to note that if you have members who are undecided, uh, do not, do not select do not renew. This will remove the girl from your troop permanently. So instead, select I'll decide later. Some ideas to make early bird registration. Uh, add it into your year and year end ceremony or your bridging event so that parents can sign their daughters up right then and there. Add it into your last meetings as you're planning for the next year. You could also consider using troop funds to pay for all or a portion of the troop's membership fees. It's easier for everyone and an excellent use of the money the girls earned this year. And don't forget that this is also a great time to add new girls to your troops, and not just girls, members, to your troops so they're ready to jump in for the next year. 
And this next slide, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful. There's some really great statistics here I'm going to talk about. So as you're getting ready to re-register, remind the families that through surveys through the 2016, we reported that 79% of girls are developing a strong sense of self, 58% of girls seek positive challenges, 67% report developing healthy relationships, 80% advance their diversity, 57% advocate for themselves and others, 65% educate and inspire others, and 76% of girls feel empowered to act. Those are some really powerful, some really powerful statistics in my opinion. All right, so we're going to jump back into how to plan for next year. We've already talked about financial reports. We've talked about fun celebrations. You're ready to re-register with Early Bird. So now comes some more fun. We'll start talking about next year and start thinking about what badges or events you didn't get to do this year, what kind of fun things your girls might want to do next year. So what we have, no matter what age level your girls are at, they need to have a voice in your troop activities. This is what makes Girl Scouts so unique. Girls get to help decide and plan the activities they want to do. That's what makes Girl Scouts fun. That's why girls will keep staying is that they have that voice. And so getting a head start on your planning is a major perk of early bird registration. And one way to do your planning is to have a meeting and call it a planning party because parties are fun. So the goal would be to leave with the girls, leaders, and parents with having a general plan for next year that would include trips and activities too. And most importantly, you want to make sure the girls are leading and the brainstorming and the voting at this meeting. So first for your planning, you would start out by finding what are the girls' interests. Is there, have them bring something new that they want to try this year. Or maybe have them also think about something they did this year, but they want to do it again or do it in some kind of a different way. And then have the girls look through the Girls Guide to Girl Scouting, which is our handbook. You should go through the volunteer toolkit or go online at girlscouts.org. And that's where you'll find all of the badges and all of the journeys. And then, well, most of the badges and most of the journeys, I should say. And then check out our website for our program events guides for different events that you can attend. And then be sure to research and discuss some possible trips. Then next, have a big giant brainstorming session and write down the ideas. The girls will come up with so many fun ideas, probably some crazy ones too, but then you can vote on them and then you can begin to prioritize and put them in order. And you can even start with a simple budget so you can let the girls see how much it will cost if they wanted to do, to do 100 things next year. Maybe girls, we can't do all of that because it will cost this much, but maybe you know, we could do this much. And then you could start thinking about how much is it, things are going to cost and start planning your cookie sales and things like that. And it helps you narrow and prioritize your activities. And then you want to make sure you have your calendar handy and decide with the parents and girls about how many meetings you'll have for the year and uh, how many special trips or events are feasible for your troop for the year. And when you're making these plans, you'll, you want to be mindful of all the different religious holidays and that not all girls observe all the same holidays. And, and these planning meetings are a wonderful time, to, again, to invite new girls and new adults to your meetings so that these new girls can jump right into your, your troop, get excited, and start sharing their input right away. And so for some ideas for planning, check out our website. There's so many things on our website, especially in our blog. We can't say the blog enough. If you haven't gotten onto it and receiving that, you definitely should. There's so much on there that's a lot of fun. And some keywords would be planning, parent engagement, or budget. Organizing your troop is, was always meant to be a team effort. And Girl Scouts is just more fun and enriching for the girl when there's family involvement. So communicate. You're all a seasoned leader right now. You know what worked well in your troop. And you have some good ideas of what you could do to make the troop better this upcoming year. And you need to tell your parents what you need. Now is your chance to help them understand that the girls have plans, they have these goals and ideas, things they want to do, and that the troop needs everyone to participate in some kind of way. And when you're asking, be specific. Don't just say, we need volunteers, can anybody help? But 
really be specific and say, we need a treasurer, we need help at troop meetings, we need drivers, we need cookie coordinators or product sales coordinators, we need food donations. So when you ask for what you need, you just might get that. And then troop leadership is supposed to be a committee. So ask family members. It can be anyone, moms, dads, grandmas, aunts, cousins can be troop assistants. Um, attached is a resource that you can download with specific roles and tasks that you can ask parents or caregivers or um, adults that can help take on roles in the troop. It's attached in the handout section over on the side. And the last part is to remember to bring your families together throughout the year to thank them and celebrate families too. So this year we have a really special opportunity for you. We're very excited about it. This is our national convention. It is called GIRL 2017. And it's happening October 6th through the 8th and it's right here in Columbus. So this is a great opportunity because national convention travels throughout the country and it happens only once every three years. So this might be a once in a lifetime opportunity where our national convention is right here in the state of Ohio. So um, at, at convention there are opportunities for girls of all grade levels to engage and they can go as a troop, they could go individually with parents, and there are some overnight options for brownies through ambassadors, and there are day passes available for everyone. What a wonderful place for girls to meet Girl Scouts from across the country and see our sisterhood in action. It's so exciting. So you can find out more information from our national website, which is girlscouts.org. And there are tons of local programs that are happening. We get really excited about them. So we wanted to give you a sneak peek for next year of some things that are happening. And whether it's council program or what, something through our community partners, there are programs for everyone. And we do encourage everyone to travel. These are our council events, and you are welcome to travel anywhere to any event to attend them. So we're going to start first with Toledo. And in Toledo, we have the big event, which is Believe in Girls event. And there will be over 100 exhibitors at this expo with hands-on activities and workshops. A great place to choose your adventure and plan your troop year, fun things to do. We also have a derby car build, and this is for all ages, and it's a building day where the girls will learn some woodworking skills from experts, and they start building their derby cars. We have a fairy tale ball for our daisies and brownies and juniors. It's an enchanting experience where the girls will meet characters who are building courage, confidence, and character, and then our older girls help plan and facilitate the different activities. And we have what we call CSA Association, which stands for Cadet Senior Ambassadors. And this is a new club where they'll develop leadership skills by creating and planning events. In our Lima office, in Lima area, we have Girls Go STEM Jamboree, where girls will discover science, technology, engineering, and math in a jam-packed, full of fun day. And that's for brownies and juniors. For brownies, we have Girls in Motion, and this is where girls learn dance moves throughout the ages. They'll come up with their own dance and create energy-focused treats. There's also an older girl opportunity for a program aid. Next we have our cadets are earning the babysitter badge. And then we have Air Force Air and Space Museum, which is a lot of fun. Our daisies can explore space, and they'll create this device that lands safely without breaking an egg in it. And then our brownies will discover the forces of flight and they'll create a clothespin glider. And the juniors construct a lunar rover and try building a balloon-powered rocket. And then all ages, there's an astronaut training overnight. So that sounds like fun. I've always wanted to be an astronaut, so that sounds like so much fun. Uh, in Dayton, we have superhero safety. And this is for daisies and brownies. And girls become their own super kind of own kind of superhero as they complete the requirements for the safety award. And the girls come dressed as their favorite real life or fictional superhero. Our juniors and cadets can become familiar with basic techniques for sewing and they make a simple project. Our cadets and older can claim their space on the stage and learn improv comedy. And then our older girls, seniors and ambassadors, will learn how to be a part of a sisterhood pursuing their dreams at that journey retreat at Camp Rolling Hills. 
And then in Cincinnati, we have Camp Spooky, so much fun. Our Daisy Brownies and Juniors will do crafts, stories, games, and those. there's an the age-appropriate haunted mansion, and our older girls plan the activities. We have iRobot, where girls can program, build, and run a Lego robot. We have Got IT, where girls can think about, uh, have their, try, sorry, they can try computer science through design thinking, mobile app development, and mentorship. That's for our cadets and older. And we have a CSA leadership conference where girls spend the weekend developing leadership like problem solving, decision making, and critical thinking through hands-on workshops. And of course, we love our outdoor. We have wonderful camp properties. If you haven't been out there yet, you really need to get out and check out our camp properties and outdoor workshops. So we'll start with outdoor skills progression. These are workshops for all levels, and it builds that path to a lifetime of loving the outdoors. And girls will learn fun skills like fire building, knots, hiking, and even outdoor cooking. And for adventuring with maps, it's for all ages. So our brownies, they find hidden clues using maps and find hidden things on camp. And our juniors discover the world of orienteering with compasses. Our CSAs decipher detailed orienting maps and demonstrate navigation skills on a cross-country challenge. And then if you haven't tried our low or high challenge courses yet, that's going to be something fun that the girls always love. Our younger girls work on team building skills on the low challenge. And then our older girls who are thrill seekers, they climb up the 30 feet height in the air and they challenge, they master all these obstacles and then they zip line to the finish. A lot of fun. Um, if you like being outdoors in the cold, our older girls can do an amazing polar race where they compete against other troops outdoors. We have a rock in overnight where it's rock climbing all night long. And then we have what's called Camping 101 and Camping Fever. So again, if you haven't taken your girls camping yet, this is a wonderful first time opportunity. It happens at most of our camps across the council. And it's we have trained camp staff. So the camp staff will work with the girls and they will help teach you and the girls outdoor skills. So it's a great place to come and check out our lodges and our tents and learn some outdoor camping skills. So this is just a taste. We wanted to get you knowing a sneak peek of what's happening. We love our events. We get really excited. I hope you can hear that. Um, we have over 300 events happening next year. And it's so much fun. There's something for every interest, every age level. And um, beginning, our new calendar will be online July 1. So if you early bird, you'll be able to start registering for all these fun events July 1. And then our entire program event guide will be open to others and online uh, in August. And so I'll hand it back to Layla. All right. Thanks, Becky. I also want to mention um, somebody on our earlier webinar asked if you are only able to go to events that are in your area. That's absolutely not true. These are all council-wide. So if, if you're in here in Dayton and you want to travel up to Toledo, they'd love to have you. So don't let that, don't let travel deter you. Um, I'm going to start going over some resources. There are a lot of resources to help guide you wrap up this year and steer you into the next. Um, there's also some downloadable handouts on the control panel. You should see a little tab that says handouts. I'm working on getting the second handout to you, but um, the early bird flyer is attached there. So here's probably a reminder of some of the resources that you've pro you may or may not have seen. Uh, the Girls Guide to Girl Scouting, this has info on awards and badge earning guidelines and suggestions, traditions, ceremony suggestions, and uniform specifics, and a whole bunch more. Journey Guides, they contain the leadership award for the journey, along with the goals and steps to meet each goal, and then there are activity and discussion suggestions. Most journeys and badges can also be found on the volunteer toolkit on our website, and then fun... Fun fact, you're hearing it first, there are new journeys coming out this summer, so stay tuned, um, and we'll get to tell you a little bit more about those soon. The program events guide, Becky just showed you some awesome events coming up, so those will be found in the program events guide, along with the like 300 others she mentioned there's going to be. 
So make sure to check that out. It's a great planning tool that can be found at the Girl Scout Center um, or downloadable on our website. Also, don't forget about customer care. They're always ready and willing to help any of us. And then we have some great online resources, too. So our council website, gswo.org, has a number of great resources, including our blog. You've heard some blog talk earlier in the webinar. Um, you can search by keyword. Um, for this time of year, you can type in things like early bird, planning ahead, bridging, um, planning, anything like that. And the volunteer toolkit is also on our website, along with the activities calendar, uh, safety activity checkpoints, plus other general resources and documents for leaders, um, as well as information about product sales and camp. And then if you're on Facebook, be sure to join the GSWO volunteer support page, as well as your service unit page. A lot of great information goes out there and communication and support from both council um, and other volunteers. And then don't forget GSUSA's website, that's girlscouts.org. It's a great resource to bookmark. It's got a lot of great information on various topics, including everything you need to know about pretty much each and every badge and journey. And sure, there are a lot of great opportunities for girls, and we're always focused on girls learning, but there's some really great learning opportunities for you as leaders and volunteers, too. So. Uh, first, there are council webinars, such as the one that you are on. Some other topics that you may want to check out, um, highest awards, volunteer toolkit, product sales. Um, there's in-person trainings, too, and these can be with council staff or other volunteers. They usually cover things like journeys, highest awards, grade level coaching, camp training. I'm sure they've helped you out with um, some of you that are maybe newer leaders. And then service unit meetings. And if you have not been to a service unit meeting, get yourself there. Your service unit leaders can help provide resources and guidance and also opportunities and events just for your area. And it connects you with other leaders in your area. There are two adult conferences that I'm super excited about. They're scheduled for 2017, 2018. There's the volunteer led conference at Camp Libby. This is gonna be in October. And then there's the council hosted event um, in April of next year. And that's going to be here at the Dayton Girl Scout Center. It's a chance for us adults to let loose and have a little fun and have our own Girl Scout experience. And then we do have uh, an upcoming webinar series. So some of you did mention your bridging. Many of you are not. But if you are, um, there are bridging, there's a bridging series and you will get a follow-up email after this webinar and it'll have the links to those. But it's gonna give you a little more detail about bridging and also kind of what to expect with the girls um, as they start to transition and grow and kind of how your role evolves with, with their growth and development. Um, and some more tips on bridging ceremonies itself. And then, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the question box and we would be more than happy to answer. I don't have any at the moment, but I am going to quickly add the family engagement and parent engagement handout that I promised just a second ago. And we'll hang on the line here a little bit so you can download the two resources. One has early bird information, so Layla went over a bunch of information and all the incentives and how to register. So there's a wonderful uh, flyer you can download for early bird. And then the other attachment is going to be about parent engagement and specific roles that you can ask your parents to take on. So you can go ahead and download those. And Continue. We'll wait while you download those, or if you have any questions, go ahead and type those in. And I am working on getting that. All right, it should be there for you. 
Oh, now it says it's there twice. Okay. Well, either way, it is definitely there. You have the ways adults can help. Um, and then you have the early bird registration info that just dropped today, too. So new information for you. And we will be sending you a follow-up survey in the next 24 hours. So if you would please fill it out for us. We'd like to know um, what you thought of the webinar. We're always trying to improve and to come up with new topics and ideas. So if we missed some questions that you wanted to cover, please share that in the survey. Otherwise, have a great evening, and we're so glad that you were here. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.